Chapter 8, Lesson 2, Essential Question. How can the strategy Draw a Diagram help you solve division problems by writing a multiplication sentence? Before we get started, I want to remind you that the title of this lesson is Problem Solving, so we're going to be um, taking apart word problems and then using multiplication to help us figure out a division problem. All right, so let's look at Unlock the Problem. Erica makes six submarine sandwiches and cuts each sandwich into thirds. How many one-third size sandwich pieces does she have? Underline what you're being asked to find and circle the important information. You should have underlined how many one-third size sandwich pieces does she have and circled six because that's how many she starts with sandwiches and then thirds because that's the size she cuts them into. So now the first couple boxes on our um, plan should be pretty easy to fill in. The first one, what do I need to find? I need to find, what did you underline? Rewrite that in this box. You should have filled in, I need to find how many one-third size sandwich pieces Erica has. And then what information do you need to use? Filling in, it should say, I need to use the size of each piece of sandwich and the number of sandwiches, like little mini sandwiches, that she cuts. And then how are you going to use this information? That's the third box on the left. Well, today we're going to be practicing drawing a diagram. So you're going to fill in, I can draw a diagram to organize the information from the problem and then I can use the organized information to find this sentence up here. We're now going to take all of this information that we've thought about and we are going to actually put that into use now and solve our problem. So since Erica cuts six sa submarine sandwiches, um, our diagram needs to show six rectangles to represent the sandwiches. So there is six rectangles right there. And then I can divide each of the six rectangles into thirds. That's what these red dotted lines are. There's one, two, three pieces in each of those rectangles that represent the sandwiches. Then to find the total number of thirds in the six rectangles, I can multiply the number of thirds in each rectangle by the number of rectangles. So we have how many thirds in this? There are three thirds in each rectangle that represents the sandwich. So how many actual third pieces are there? There are 18. And you can even double check that just by counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up to 18. So looking right down here, Erica has 18 one third size sandwich pieces. Let's try another problem. Roberto is cutting three blueberry pies into halves to give to his neighbors. How many neighbors will get a one-half size pie piece? I want you to press pause, underline what you're being asked to find, circle the important information, and then see how much of this on the left-hand side you can fill in with your own sentences. So go ahead, press pause, and get to work. All right, you should have underlined how many neighbors will get a half size piece, a pie piece, and that needs to go into this area right here of what do you need to find. And then you should have circled three blueberry pies, that's how many total he is baking or cutting, and then um, what size is he cutting them into? He's cutting them into halves. Now one thing that I did, because this is a word, I actually circled it, but I drew a line over here and wrote it numerically so that I could see one half. And then I knew that I was starting with a whole and dividing it up. So I did a division symbol here to, so that I knew that I was dividing overall. But using our strategy today, we're going to turn that division problem into an easier multiplication problem. So that is the information that you needed to use, three and half. 
All right, so I wrote my information of what you need, to, what I need to find, and what I need to use. And right here, how many neighbors will get a half a piece, um, half a pie? That would just be the same as we're just finding how many halves are in three. So now, looking down at our bottom, how are we going to use this information? Well, our strategy today is we are going to draw a diagram. That is what we are doing today. Now, because we're working with pi, you could essentially use a square, but just for visual sake, we're going to use um, circles. And circles work great with halves and fourths um, and thirds, but if you get much more than that, I prefer to use squares, but it is okay to use circles if you prefer circles. So we have our three pies right here, okay? And what size pieces are we cutting them into? Well, we're cutting them into one half size pieces. So I'm just going to go straight down the middle. Okay, I've cut them in half. And so remember, really, we're taking three divided by one half. But we can turn this into a multiplication problem because we have how many circles here? We have three circles. And how many one half pieces are in each circle? There are two. And so that will help us get the answer of six. And you can count that. We have one, two, three, four, five, six half pies. Therefore, six neighbors are going to get half a pie. And we can fill that in right down here at the bottom. And let's look at the explain problem. Explain how the diagram you drew for the division problem helps you write a multiplication sentence. So how does this picture right here of our three circles divided into halves help you write a multiplication problem? Does it show us a certain amount of groups and what is in each group? It does. See if you can write that in a sentence. Essentially, our diagram shows three groups of two. And so we know that three groups of two is a multiplication sentence. For your share and show problems today, it's this whole page. And number one, it walks you through some steps. It tells you first what to do, and then the second step, and then what to do finally. So number three, one, go ahead and make sure that you, you follow the directions and you read what it tells you to do. Um, and then number two is going to play off of number one a little bit. And um, because this was a fairly short actual lesson part, I'll be able to walk through each step of the share and show after you have tried to work on it on your own. So as of right now, press pause and work on the share and show problems. Remember, we're working on drawing a diagram. All right, walking through the first share and show. A chef has five blocks of butter. Each block weighs a pound, weighs one pound. That should say one. Um, she cuts a block into fourths. So how many one-fourth pound pieces of butter does the chef have? So the first step they tell you to do, after you should have underlined what you're being asked to find and circling your important information, um, is to draw the rectangles to represent the blocks of butter. How many blocks of butter? Five. Okay, so there's my five blocks, and I tried to make them roughly the same size. The second step is then divide each rectangle into fourths, so four parts of each of them. Alright, so I divided each of these blocks into four pieces. Now, I could have drawn them this way and divided them like an, using a T, and I could have drawn a circle dividing them into fourths. Um, being realistic about butter, <laughs> most likely this is the way that it would be done. But in your diagram, that's not necessarily the way that you have to divide it. And then finally, multiply the number of fourths in each block by the number of blocks. So how many are in each block? Well, there are four in each block. And how many blocks are there? There are five. So how many actual one-fourth pieces are there? There are 20. And then right here, I just um, added in the division problem so that we could see that these were all equal. 
So now looking at number two, basing off of the R picture again, what if the chef had three blocks of butter and cut the blocks into thirds? How many one-third pieces of butter would the chef have? Okay, you use the exact same steps. So on number two, um, three blocks of butter, one, two, three squares, um, into cut into thirds, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then I had three times three, and that gave me the total of nine. Number three, Jason had two pizzas that he cut into fourths. Okay, two pizzas, and he cut into fourths. So I have two circles divided into fours. How many does he have? Well, there's four times two equals eight. So your total would be eight for that one. Okay, number four and number five. Number four, Thomas makes five sandwiches that he cuts into thirds. How many one-third size sandwich pieces does he have? This is exactly like one of our examples, just less sandwiches. So you sh how many sandwiches should you have drawn? You should have drawn five, and I'm going to start with my division problem now. And then we're cutting them into thirds, so we're dividing it into one-third pieces. Okay, so I should see five sandwiches over here or five rectangles, and they should be divided into what size pieces? Thirds, okay? Dividing those into thirds. And so there's five groups, and how many inside each group? Three. So how many thir one-third size pieces are there? There are 15 sandwich pieces. And then number five. Okay, number five. Holly cuts three pans of brownies into eighths. How many one-eighth brownie pieces does she have? Okay, so how many pans do we need? I'm going to do it below it. Three pans of brownies. Right there. And now we need them into eighths, okay? So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to divide them into fourths right here. Okay, so there's four. And I'm going to cut them right in half. So there's that. So I, our problem is three divided by what size pieces? One-eighth size pieces. And so how many groups do we have? We have three groups. How many inside each group? There are eight inside each group. And what is our answer? Our answer is 24 brownie pieces. So that's the Sharon show. Um, if you made a mistake, double, just double back. Make sure that it wasn't a small computation error or just a mistake in your drawing. That kind of threw you off. And then go ahead and work on your other tasks.